Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. For many, the concept of a utility vehicle capable of carrying six full-size adults is ridiculous. Most never have the need to carry that many people. Most people looking at buying a utility side-by-side -side are only looking for one with three seats. What's interesting though is that the moment you move to needing six seats, the choices get pretty slim. Add the necessity for a vehicle that's fast, rides well, and has excellent capabilities, and the list gets even shorter. In the past, we'd almost universally recommend Polaris's Ranger XP900 Crew 6 to a person with these requirements. It has always been the embodiment of capability and comfort. But Can-Am wasn't gonna let that stand for long. Now that they've released the Defender Max XT, we can do what you're always asking us to do and what we do best, put them side by side and figure out which one's the winner. For this shootout, we're gonna break things down into a few categories and give one point to the vehicle that's superior in each. At the end of it all, the vehicle with the most points is gonna get our nod as being the best six seat utility side by side in 2016. After much careful thought and deliberation, the seven categories we've chosen for comparison are power, which includes horsepower, usable power, torque, clutching, and power delivery, ride and handling, which includes plushness, big and small bump absorption, steering feel and accuracy, and quality of the EPS tuning, storage, how much space is available for your stuff and how it's configured, comfort and convenience, things like seating, getting in and out of the vehicle, location and operation of switches and controls, Adaptability, how quickly and easily can the vehicle be altered to accommodate changing needs and situations? Configurability, how easy is it to upgrade or modify the vehicle for a specific purpose? What types of parts are available and how easy are they to install? Finally, our last category is, as always, price and value. What does it cost and is it worth the money? We believe these seven categories give the best overview of how these vehicles perform in their intended environment. So let's get started talking about power. The HD10 version of the Defender like we have here comes with a 976cc V-twin power plant that produces 71 horsepower. It features Can-Am's ITC or Intelligent Throttle Control System. Basically it's drive-by-wire which allows for three different throttle profiles that can be selected via a dash-mounted switch. This big V-twin runs excellent. It's quiet, it's got tons of power, especially down low, it's a beast for towing and it tops out at an ungoverned 64 miles an hour. While the drive-by wire system is interesting and has its place, we think more needs to be done when it comes to smoothing out the initial throttle tip-in. Like all Can-Ams, it's more jumpy than it should be. Running in eco or work mode helps, but this should never be a problem in any mode. The Ranger is motivated by Polaris's tried and true 875cc parallel twin that produces 68 horsepower. It's also drive-by-wire, though you can't really tell. It feels every bit as connected as any cable-actuated throttle. One word describes the Ranger's overall power delivery. Smooth. Maybe two words. Buttery smooth. It's almost electric. Perfect clutching. Excellent throttle tip-in. There's almost nothing bad to say about this motor. Other than its limiter, this motor has excellent bottom end and tons of mid-range but Polaris has decided to limit its top end to just over 50 miles an hour, which is both frustrating and annoying. So here we have two very different motors. Both are powerhouses and have awesome torque. The Ranger is smoother, but speed limited. The Defender is faster, but not as smooth. When it comes to power delivery on a pure utility vehicle like these ones, we have to go with smooth power delivery versus higher speeds though. So we're gonna give the Ranger its first point in the power category. Next, we're gonna look at ride and handling, and this is an interesting one to talk about because these vehicles aren't meant for recreational purposes. They're not meant to be sporty. But if you think about it, getting six people and all your gear into and out of a remote location still requires a vehicle to ride and handle well. The Defender features Can-Am's excellent DPS system, but this one is only single mode. The chassis is tight and sway bars do an excellent job of limiting body roll, but the tuning of that single mode DPS leaves a little bit to be desired. As speed increases, even on a trail, the level of assist drops too much, leaving the steering feeling heavy. 10 inches of travel is damped by a set of basic gas charge shocks that are preload adjustable. 
The Defender does an excellent job of soaking up both big and small hits on the trail. It smooths out rough patches and doesn't leave the passengers bouncing off their seats. Polaris's Ranger has their own version of EPS, and it's also a single mode system, but this single mode system works excellent. It's smooth and linear, and its level of assist drops at a perfect ratio with the vehicle's speed. Steering is light, but you still have lots of feel on the trail. The Ranger leaves something to be desired in the ride department, though. Both of its front and rear 10 inches of travel are damped by another set of basic preload adjustable shocks. But where the Defender is smooth and treats its passengers extremely well, the Ranger actually feels harsh in comparison. On sharp hits, passengers often end up with their butts coming right off the seat. The Defender rides the best, but the Ranger handles the best. So which is more important? In this case, we'll take the better ride of the Defender. Its handling isn't bad, it's just not as good as the Ranger. And if a long day of riding is ahead of you, like us, we bet you'd take the best riding vehicle you could get, which is the Defender, so one point on its side of the ledger. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Originally, I was going to do a category on capacities, box, total payload, and towing. But after looking at the specs of these two vehicles, they are identical. They both have 1,750 pound payload capacities, 1,000 pound box capacities, and they both tow up to 2,000 pounds. The boxes are, by square inch, almost identical. So there's really not much to compare here. Next, let's talk about storage. If you're gonna be hauling around a whole bunch of people, chances are they're gonna have some stuff they wanna bring with them. The question is, where are you gonna put it? The Defender does storage in a very interesting and unique way. Up front in the dash, there's a removable storage box big enough for tools, lunches, or other medium-sized items. Under the bench seats, there's a large watertight storage bin that can be moved to be underneath almost any other seat but the driver's. The dash also houses a number of other storage areas. Basically, there's places to put your stuff and it's configurable. The Ranger does storage differently. Under the front passenger and middle seats, there's a storage tray and a huge storage bin. Likewise, underneath all three of the rear seats, there are more storage bins and storage trays. The dash has a big glove box and lots of cubby holes. At first glance, the Defender has more storage, but if you add up all the underseat storage you get in the Ranger, they're pretty close to equal. At the end of the day, both of these vehicles have tons of places to put your stuff. The Defender just does it better, so it gets one more point in this category. The Defender definitely has comfortable seats. They're soft and you never feel the seat base, even on huge hits. There's tons of leg room for the driver and all the passengers, and all the switches are mounted in places that make sense and are easy to reach by the driver. Passenger handholds are also excellent, particularly in the front, yet it's not all perfect. The netting clips can be awkward to use, especially in the back, and getting in and out of the back seats is difficult. Many said they hit their knees when getting out almost every time. And speaking of knees, there's not much knee room when a big guy is seated in the back. The Ranger seats aren't nearly as nice. A larger rider can almost always feel the seat base. There's lots of leg room both in the front and for rear passengers. And more importantly, there's lots of knee room in the back seat. Netting clips are easy to operate with one hand and getting in and out of the back seat is almost as easy as getting in and out of the front. Passenger handholds in the back are fine, but up front they leave a lot to be desired, especially for the middle passenger who has basically nothing to hold on to. Switches on the dash are in just okay positions. Not great, but not terrible. Both of these vehicles have their high and low points, but the Defender definitely does comfort and convenience better than the Ranger. It's got better seats, better passenger grab bars, and better switchgear layout. It definitely deserves this point. It's time to move on to adaptability. What we're looking at here is how easily the vehicle can be reconfigured in the field to adapt to different situations. The Defender seats can be flipped up to open the entire back seat or front passenger seating areas. The storage box is also removable. Basically, the interior of the Defender can be adapted to suit almost any scenario. The Ranger, on the other hand, isn't adaptable at all. The interior is what it is. If you have something that won't fit in the box, you're out of luck. In our opinion, this could be a really important feature when you're working on a job and plans change. Obviously, the Defender gets the point here. Our second last category is configurability or accessory integration. Here we're gonna look at how many accessories are available for your vehicle and how easy they are to install. The Defender is the new kid on the block, so it's no surprise there are fewer Defender-specific accessories available. With that said, Can-Am has done an amazing job of making all the important stuff available right away. 
From cabs to plows to bumpers, just about anything you could possibly want is available. Cab systems mount flush with the roll bar for an automotive look, and plow blades mount quickly and easily. The Ranger's been around the longest and therefore has the longest list of accessories and attachments. Polaris has also been doing this the longest, so they've got their systems sorted out. Their cab system, for example, mounts easily and quickly, and it fits incredibly. Their plows mount up in seconds, and while it doesn't include one, the Ranger is pre-wired for a winch. Furthermore, Polaris has an accessory for just about any imaginable scenario. Whatever job or goal you have to accomplish, Polaris has an accessory that attaches easily and seamlessly integrates with the vehicle. But after shopping around and checking out how things fit, we all agree Polaris is doing accessory integration just a bit better than Can-Am at the moment. So, second point for the Ranger. Our last area of comparison is price and value. This one is oftentimes the make or break for a lot of buyers, which is why we save it for last. We're looking at both what the vehicle costs and what you're getting for your money. Both of these vehicles have right around 70 horsepower. They both have power steering, turf mode, aluminum wheels, and are available with nice painted plastics. The Defender retails for $19,100, whereas the Polaris retails for $16,500 US. Yes, that's a big difference, but the Defender also includes a winch and a full roof. So the question is, are you getting more for your money with the Defender, or are the things the Ranger is missing worth the cost savings? At the end of the day, you're going to spend about $1,350 bucks more on a Defender if the Ranger is similarly equipped. That's a lot of bling. If the Ranger was a bad vehicle, you could justify spending that $1,350 bucks more to get a Defender. But the Ranger is a great vehicle, behind the Defender in only a few areas. So it really does deserve the point here in the price and value category. And with that last point, we have our winner. There's no question Polaris's Ranger XP900 Crew 6 is an excellent vehicle. It does everything you could possibly need it to do, and more. And until now, it's always sat at the very top of the six-seat utility side-by-side -side game. But the numbers don't lie. Its three points were not enough to best the Defender Max XT's four-point total. The Defender does all the same things as the Ranger, it just does most of them a little bit better. We think either would do a great job if a six-seater is what you're looking for, but we have no doubts. If you want the best six-seater on the market, Can-Am's Defender Max XT HD 10 is the one you want. Dirt Tracks is brought to you by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Lightweight performance. There's never a shortage of cool stuff happening here at Dirt Tracks. Whether it's trick new parts that just rolled in and we're unboxing them, or brand new ATVs or side-by-sides that are coming out of the trailer, we are never at a loss for excitement. Over the past many years, we've made it a staple to do custom builds each season. Sometimes we take a mild approach, but for the most part, we like to light things up and get it interesting, building custom vehicles from the ground up. We've done utility to sport conversions, utility to mud machine, ultimate sand buggies, and the Take All Family Expedition from last year. It's not just something that we do, it's a passion for us, and 2016 is by no means any different. We wanted to take a slightly different direction with our vehicle this season. Instead of going full sport, or full utility, or hey, even full mud, we wanted to use a sport utility vehicle and then expand on its capabilities in every single way. And our base vehicle for 2016 will be the General 1000. This new Polaris side-by-side -side has truly impressed us with its sport and utility capabilities. However, nothing should ever be left as status quo. So we plan to update and overhaul this side-by-side -side to increase potential in all areas, both work and play. And to do this properly, the folks from Off Camber Fabrication and MBRP, who are located just an hour north, will be coming alongside us to bring our design to life. Jared Heshka from MBRP will tell us more. So uh, MBRP has now actually just celebrated our 20 year anniversary. Um, Martin actually started way back in the day with something called the B&B Eliminator, which actually was our uh, original snow can. Moving forward to today, we've actually got into, you know, heavy into diesel truck, gas truck, as well as late model muscle car from like Mustang headers to, you know, single dual exhaust systems, a lot of really cool stuff. And, you know, basically anything performance Martin's definitely into, or if it doesn't sound cool, look cool, or make it go fast, uh, Martin would known it. You know what, I think it's his general drive that, you know, is definitely um, pushed through the company and helps us um, with the side-by-side -side and off-road and everything as well too. So, you know, I think it's all a keen interest and we're definitely a bunch of enthusiasts here and that helps us, us MBRP, grow through side-by-side -side and uh, our enthusiasm towards our customers. 
We're excited to be setting out on this build with a group of enthusiasts like the folks from MBRP and Off Camber Fabrications. And we know with their capabilities and the design that we have in mind, we're gonna come up with a vehicle that truly is worthy to fly the numbers of the Duke brothers and possibly the flag too. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer, built for adventure. Arctic Cat has been a solid innovator in the side-by-side -side business for a long time. Proof positive of this reality is the recreation slash utility Prowler. Dressed in new clothes and ready for work and play, the 1000 Prowler is probably the highest value vehicle in the segment. What segment, you ask? The recreation utility category is the hottest contested class in model year 17. In response to the arrival of Polaris all-new General 1000, the Can-Am Commander 1000 and the Kawasaki Terex have had to revisit the definition of a rec utility side-by-side. -side. Clearly, the Prowler's sporty look, capable handling, tilting dump box, and two-passenger seating, propelled by a potent 1000cc four-valve V-twin, lock the Prowler 1000 tightly in this competitive segment. For 2016, Arctic Cat updated the Prowler with all new sexy, eye-appealing skin. The 600-pound dumping utility box remains, however, the interior and everything forward of it got a complete makeover. The result is a look that's fully in line with the competition. One of the spin-off benefits of the new skin is this huge automotive-style front trunk. Access is exceptional and capacity can only be described as big gulp caliber. Interior ergos are well thought out using a tilt wheel and easy to understand instrumentation. On the other hand, the Prowler's tractor-ish seats and cumbersome side nets leave something to be desired. That's where the Prowler tweaks our sensibilities. The recreation utility side-by-side -side business is not just competitive, it's red hot. Each new vehicle introduced the past three years has been significantly upgraded in an effort to one-up the competition. Honestly, the Prowler needs doors and more supportive seats to get in the General's face. In the engine department, Arctic Cat's got things figured out. The St. Cloud, Minnesota-built 1000 EFI V-Twin used here is a solid performer. There's tons of low-end grunt, a surprising mid-range hit, an excellent full whack top end jam. The Prowler uses a permanently engaged CVT with a sprag clutch for takeoff. This means you can work the Prowler hard without heating up the CVT drive belt. Arctic Cat's electric switch 4x4 system features selectable full diff lock mode when the going gets thick and gooey. For sure, the Prowler XT1000 can work hard. However, buyers in the recreation utility segment have high expectations for both performance and capability. The most important attributes for these multitasking buyers are handling and ride quality. The Prowler 1000 XT comes with electronic power steering and we are standing and applauding. Slow and high speed handling on twisty, tight or wide open trails is good. The Prowler neither pushes or oversteers at the limit. There's four effective hydraulic discs with braided steel lines for stopping. The impression you get when pushing the Prowler to its limits is one of balance and linear response. Nothing silly happens when you're being silly. That's the handling. Ride quality is another issue. We're okay with the Prowler's double A-arm IFS up front. It delivers a plush response in medium hits and resists bottoming well. However, it's the calibration of the rear suspension which undermines an otherwise decent riding side by side. It is both oversprung and overdamped, producing a harsh ride on rough trails. Sweet cast aluminum wheels shorn with premium Maxxis Bighorn meats are part of the XT package. They add significant value to this nicely equipped side-by-side. -side. Pay attention to this. There's good news here for shoppers looking for real value. Arctic Cat's factory authorized clearance sale is offering giant incentives to Prowler buyers. This Prowler, a model year 16 1000 XT, is identical to the model year 17 1000 XT, but has a sizable rebate attached to it, making your shopping for a side-by-side -side both easier and more complicated all at once. The Prowler XT1000 is not the hottest vehicle in the recreation utility category. The vehicle sits mid-pack from both a performance and feature standpoint. 
The Prowler needs doors, better seats, and a rear suspension tune-up to run head-to-head -head with the General. On the other hand, the General ain't cheap. With Arctic Cat's incentives, you can walk away with a new 1000 XT and enough jing in your jeans to take a two-week vacay in Moab. Easy! The Prowler is proven and tough. It checks all the boxes on the vast majority of Recute shoppers' feature hit list. Our criticisms of the Prowler are more a result of comparison with the competition, not literally with the 2016 or 2017 XT1000. The Prowler 1000 XT is a solid player in the hotly contested recreation utility segment in model year 17. With the strong incentives Arctic Cat has made available in both the US and Canada, overlooking this capable, high performance side by side could be a serious mistake. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off road innovation, Can Am. The ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. If you like this video, click the link and subscribe to Dirt Tracks' YouTube page where we're updating all kinds of fresh stuff like you've just seen.